Hey guys, Nicole here, aka Mrs. True Crime, and welcome to Two Concepts and a Cup of Coffee, the afterthought show where me and a guest co-host discuss one or two of the true crime cases I've gone over this season. Today we'll be discussing the oldest unsolved missing person cases in North Carolina. If you haven't watched that episode, click the link card up top of this video or the link in the description, then come back here for our discussion. And if you're new to the channel and like what you hear or see, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, comment, and or subscribe. All right, let's get started. Welcome, 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 to, to, welcome, to, to, welcome to Mrs. True Crime. Welcome to my channel. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. It's bright and yellow. I'm happy about that. Yes. Uh, I should introduce you, actually, because you're just a voice at this point. I am. This is... The voice of reason. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is Brittany. She is one of my best friends. Oh, thank you. Hello. And the co-founder and partner of mm -hmm. Retail Me Games, mm -hmm. my gaming channel that I plug shamelessly on this channel. Mm -hmm. You guys should check it out if you're into lighthearted content. You should. We play a lot of different games on there. It's great. It is. I enjoy it. I do, too. It's fun times. So, we're going to talk about the oldest unsolved missing person cases in North Carolina. Yes. We're in North Carolina. We are. How do you feel knowing that there are currently super old missing person cases in North Carolina? Well, I mean, when you talk about super old, that's... Well. Well, <coughs> when I... I mean, like... It's it's unsettling, you know, to say the least. That I think the oldest one you had was back in the forties. Uh, nineteen forty one. Nineteen forty one. So let's do let's do it like this. It was Layla Lewis and Mary Rachel, mm -hmm. uh, mother and daughter. They disappeared in nineteen forty one, mm -hmm. and then there was the two brothers. I'm really good at this when I have a script. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it's Terry and Alan, and they went missing in 1964. They were brothers, like okay. you said. Mm -hmm. And then Sherry Lee Truesdale, she went missing in 1970. So all within 30 years of each other. Too. Yeah. Interesting. 1970 is pretty close still, though. <laughs> it is. I mean, that's not that far away. It's right. like you said at the end of the video, she'd be 61 today. So, mm -hmm. I mean, theoretically speaking, she still could be out there. Very true. So could the brothers. Yeah. I mean... Because they were younger than her when they went missing, correct? Right. The youngest one was six. Yeah. And she, I think she was 14. Yeah, she was 14 when she went missing. So they might have been roughly around the same age, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's definitely unsettling, especially when you consider all the different parts of North Carolina that they were at. Like, yeah. Like, you know, it's, it wasn't just in one concentrated place. It, it was, was not. They went missing all over the place. Layla was in Carolina Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, the brothers were in Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. And Sherry was in Winston-Salem. Yeah. Which is uncomfortable. Because Winston-Salem is a little bit closer to home than I like to, <laughs> <laughs> than I like to admit. Yeah. Um, but you know what? As sad as it is to say, mm -hmm. it's really not that surprising. Because all you have to do is just go to any walmart in your surrounding area and you will see nothing but that billboard of just missing yeah. people and age progressions yeah mm -hmm. it, it really feels like almost every time you get on the road too there is some bright sign flashing those like um computer generated signs flashing saying amber alert silver yeah. alert like people go missing constantly yeah it's a little terrifying there was, oh, I don't remember what year it was, but I think it was in the 2000s. Mm -hmm. It's a case I wanted to do, but I didn't have enough time. It was going to run me over. Right. Um, I think it was, oh, 2006? Mm -hmm. She was reported missing. I don't remember her name. She was reported missing, and then she, it was weird. So she was reported missing, and then her body was never found. But what they found instead was just her blood and her hair in a dude's house. But her body's never been found. Mm. So I was like, where, what, how could, where could he have buried her? Cause he she, might not have buried her. That's true. I he think, she, just, I think like, the window was like maybe 30 minutes, 15 minutes. It was a very small window. 
So I'm just like, how, where did she go? I wish I could remember the name. I left all my notes at home. Oh, yeah. No. So I can't remember the name. <laughs> But, yeah. You should do that story, though, like on your next, because that one says volume one. Yeah. So, possibly, you know, do it again. I'm thinking about doing that one. Cause that There's one, a lot in my mind I want to do. Where was she at? Do you remember her location? I don't, actually. <coughs> Keep talking about it. I'm sure I can find it. But. but, you know, I mean, it's just, it's unsettling and it's sad. And, you know, you always have that thought process at the end of the day that hopefully they will find their way home one way or another it's weird to think of people just like showing up or just going nowhere it's almost like North Carolina is a Bermuda Triangle in and of itself that just people go missing and you never find them again that's true because okay so let's talk about the the Layla's case Mm -hmm. so she she went missing in 1941 and okay her case is weird to me because she leaves at like five or whatever to go see a friend and she's like, deliver this message. I want to see my sister. Deliver mm-hmm. this message. But she hasn't seen her sister and talked to her in months. Right. And then she goes back to her house like everything's cool and calm and collected. So like pack. Yeah. And then she, her and her daughter leave to go to the store, never get there. She just vanishes. And what they find is a car windshield that they don't even know if that's her car. Right. So, and then the last note they found was that in Wilmington, she, because she visited her friend in Wilmington, so in Wilmington, she went to a pharmacy, bought poison, mm-hmm. and... Allegedly. The, the guy said that the woman that came in and bought poison looked like her. Yeah. But he wasn't 100% sure that it was her. It, correct. Well, and actually, I should, probably should have mentioned this in the video, but I didn't think it was that important. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> On, on the report when he was questioned, there's like a, you have, to, when it's, at that time when it was like a lethal thing that you were checking out, you had to write a name. The, right. She, the guy said it looked, they had a picture of Layla. The guy said it looked like the picture, but the name was Cora Hollis. Which was her friend. Exactly. But Cora is short and blonde. Layla is tall and brunette. They look nothing alike. So she probably used her friend's name. Mm-hmm. So then the, this makes me think, like, so was she planning on killing herself and just took her daughter with her? But then if she did kill herself, where did they go? Where's the car? Well, like, I mean, <clears throat> they found the the windshield in the lake, you said? Yes. And it's stone cut. But the thing about stone cut is that even if I am from North Carolina, I don't know what that is. But it's like a, it's a water. It's a river, lake thing but i don't think it's that deep i don't think so i said stone it's snow's cut snow's cut yes and it's um so i looked up what snow's cut north carolina is okay it's in wilmington okay and what it is is a canal which is an artificial waterway constructed to allow a passage of boats or ships inland to convey water for irrigation. That's a lot of big words. <laughs> Essentially, it's kind of like a man-made river to like let people go through, let boats go through and stuff like that. It connects the Cape Fear River, river with Myrtle Grove Sound, which is just north of Carolina Beach. It huh, is okay. 1.75 miles long, 100 feet wide, and 12 feet deep. So really, it's not much deeper than a pool. Huh. Don't, I mean, aren't most pools, don't they go to like 12 feet? I've never been in the pool. Because oh. I, I don't swim. Yes. Okay. So, so I couldn't answer that. But let me average so, okay. depth of pool. So if it's. Not if it's as deep as a pool, there's no way the car is in there. Uh, yeah, well, because if they they only found found the windshield, not the car, which is weird. How does a how do you find just the windshield and not the car? Where did the car go? That's the thing. Like, where could the car have possibly gone? Because a car, even like you see cases that cars have been in waters for 
like not even year, like decades right and when you pull them out out of the water they're still intact so the, how do you just find the windshield but not the car true i don't know okay so this says that the average depth of a pool is nine feet so it's three feet deeper correct but it's that's still not too deep though no that's like a size of a child yeah that's still not that deep Mm-mm. wow yeah so so i'm here i mean technically wow. we saw the picture of the car of correct what the car would have looked like which let me pull this we've got it up right here i just want to get the actual picture i mean technically, that's a big car but it's not much bigger than my car i mean look there's not really a back seat to it mm-hmm. so everything's in the front that car is probably like eight feet long maybe okay so then if we consider that that's eight feet long it's a 12 foot deep canal Mm -hmm. theoretically speaking that car could Could fit could fit down at the bottom but even still you the car would still be intact true but depending on what they hit when they went in Mm -hmm. maybe the glass broke Maybe they, like, because if you look at a picture of this canal, um, which I had up just a second ago. Images. Okay. So, see, it's got, like, a bunch of trees and stuff, and it's, like, 100 feet wide. And it's a mile, 1.5 so miles long. it would be pretty long. hard to find. They would have to, like, send But, a... again, that's, like, a more recent picture, too. This was in 1941. Right. So it might have been smaller. I believe this says when it was made. This was made in 1931. So 10 years later. (laughs) Yes. So it was began in um, 29 and was created and finished by 1931. Wow. Okay. So then 10 years later. So this is relatively new. Nobody's really, like, people know about it, but it's not something that... You know, and see, then you've got stuff. So there's trees around it. People go fishing on it. Boats go in and out. So it's basically, it's it's a serious working water system. Yes. So in some retrospect, it is possible that the car could have been in that water. Very possible. And then, too, if you think about it, like maybe, let's say, let's have some funs and giggles. All right. This, okay. So let's say maybe she went out to go shopping for a brazier, correct? Before, That's correct, yes. Before she left. Yeah. <clears throat> she bought the poison. Maybe she was planning on killing her husband, put the medicine, put poison in his food or something like that, but maybe he didn't need it. I realize this is all circumstantial, but uh-huh. thought process wise, maybe I'm digging he did it. I'm digging that. It. Okay. She gets in the car with her daughter and runs away because she got in touch with her sister for no good reason. Correct. They haven't spoken in months. Right. Plan was to go see the parents. Where do most women flee when they try to leave their husband is their parents' house. Mm. And she took her daughter with her, which wouldn't make any sense. Why would she take her daughter on a trip to what would be a suicide? Granted, there are some women that will do that, Mm -hmm. but are some people that will do that, but nine times out of ten... If it's a suicidal type of thing, they're not going to take their kids with them unless they're messed up in the head. Which, at this point, we have not had any confirmation that she was... She has no history of mental illness from Correct. what you could find. Correct. Everyone, everyone said that she would never do anything harmful with her child present. That was the ending. Right. With her child present. So they found bits of the windshield. Theoretically speaking she could have been trying to break the windshield. When she saw that they were going into the canal, Mm -hmm. she could have been trying to break the windshield and couldn't get her and her daughter out. So then it just sinks to the bottom, but that's how they find the shards of glass. I like this theory, though. I'm not mad at that theory. I mean... I like it. It's all circumstantial. It is. Meanwhile, the brother comes up out of nowhere just to come and visit. I think he was in town, maybe, I think. And he was just like, yo, hi. And then, you know, he's like, where's my sister? Sister's not here. I'll just circle back. He comes back like an hour later. Right. Sister's not there still. And he says, okay, okay. And then he just leaves. Right. It's weird. It is. And something else that kind of, like, goes off in my mind that Mm -hmm. I find interesting 
she went to go to her friend's house to like talk or whatever mm-hmm. without her daughter. Correct. So perhaps there was something going on between her and her husband. There was like a little bit of a tiff or something. She leaves because you specifically said that she left without telling her husband she was leaving. Correct. No one actually knew that she left until she came back. Right. Yes. So she just went on her fancy and Mm -hmm. left. Perhaps this was the first time that she chose to leave and her friend convinces her you can't tell your you can't leave your daughter with him what if he what if he was let's say for sakes Uh that he was abusive and she decides that she wants to leave 1941 not that easy for a woman to divorce her husband especially if he's abusive and that was a very common thing back in those days for her husband to be abusive and women just kind of swept it on the rug when they just banded together and pretended like it didn't happen Mm mm-hmm so she runs to her friend's house, says, I can't do it anymore. I need to go. They concoct a scheme that, okay, you're going to poison your husband. Well, I can't, like, what if they trace it back to me, put it in my name, then I can just deny it because they won't have anything saying this. Oh, my God. This is such a great st- theory. Go ahead. <laughs> you have my attention. Okay. So then she's like, okay, go back and get your daughter. Now the husband is aware of the fact that she has come back to the house and she has already left. Mm-hmm. But she can't leave. Again, without coming up with some kind of excuse. And then she goes, oh, well, Rachel asked if she could go with me. Mary Rachel, whatever. Mary, yeah. Yeah. She's like, she's asked if she could go with me. She's going to come with me. She puts her in the car. They go. And something happens. The something in between, I don't know what's happening. The plan went awry. (laughs) See, I need a script. The plan went went awry. Possibly. Because you said that when the hus- when the brother came, mm-hmm. the husband was in the back. He was asleep. I thought he was doing concrete things. He, he was doing concrete when she came back the first time. Okay. And then when she left and the brother came, that's when he was asleep. Okay. See, a few minutes after they left, Edison went to sleep, but was woken up by Barry Lewis, Layla's brother. Who just wanted to say hi. Which is strange that mm-hmm. he was just wanting to say hi. Why would he have gone like, to it, sleep? It, it's wild that this is this. She's like, I'm playing this family situ- weekend. Mm-hmm. And then the brother shows up out of nowhere. She tries to get in t- touch with her sister. That she hasn't spoken to in Now, months. the only thing that makes me feel like this was a suicide uh-huh. is the fact that she tried to reach out to her sister. Because mm. a lot of times... When people are desperate and they think about killing themselves, a lot of times they will go to that mental place and, like, meet back up with those people that they haven't seen or talked to in a long time. So there's always the possibility that she was trying to reach out to her sister. Possibly. Okay, I'm gonna... I want to see this real quick. Okay. So, so for my, in my theory, before this even started, my thought process was that when she got the poison, she, okay, my thought process, when she left that house, uh-huh. she did not care about Cora. She was not going to see Cora. She was Correct. Not, she did not really want to have a message for Ida. She wanted to get the poison, but she needed some type of alibi situation uh-huh. in order to get it. So, therefore, she went to Cora first, so that way, if right. anyone asked any questions, they would go to Cora, and she'd be like, yeah, she was here, and then she went to get the poison, but her alibi was Cora. Right. That's my, that's what I'm thinking. So I think that the poison originally, I don't know if it was a, I, I want to say suicide. Like, yeah, I think it was a suicide. I think she did have plans to kill herself in some capacity right. because it doesn't make sense for why she would go and get poison. It Unless didn't, she was trying to kill her husband. Yeah. But the thing was, she had the opportunity to kill him. Like she had the poison. She cooked him a dinner. I think I didn't mention that, but she cooked him, like she cooked him a dinner. Like everything was great. Mm-hmm. But he didn't die. <laughs> like, he's not dead. So if she wants Maybe to... he didn't eat it yet. Maybe. I don't know. Because she cooked... I think it... I don't know if I mentioned this, but specifically in my research, she cooked his favorite meal. So that is kind of a... See? Yeah. That is kind of a Black Widow kind of... She cooked his favorite yeah. meal so that he would eat it specifically. But yeah. he was too busy with work or something like that. The only other thing that I can think of is right here you say that Barry circled back hours later after midnight. Correct. Or around midnight. Right. 
hours later. There is some time in between. So what happened? What was Edison doing? Did he go back to sleep? Did he realize, oh, she's not back yet? Barry comes, come out, knock, knock at the door. He goes, she was supposed to go to the store. Which was like a few blocks away. Right. She should have been back by now. Yeah. She'll be back a little bit later. Okay, well, I'll come back. Well, then he's up worried wondering Mm -hmm. maybe he caught on maybe he found the poison so then maybe you said that they were well off maybe they had two cars maybe he goes out looking for her finds her or maybe he follows her when she leaves and then barry comes back like Mm. the husband could have done something too possibly i think they searched the their carolina beach house because they had two homes that's how rich they were Mm -hmm. they had two homes but the carolina beach home was specifically layla really loved Mm -hmm. so they chose to live there permanently and the cops searched that house but they never found like a body or anything like under the concrete they never found anything Mm -hmm. so if he did kill her she's somewhere else hmm makes you think it does so and then he like writes off like oh i lost my car too blue book value thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> so let's dig into the brothers too okay uh terry and alan yes so their story is more simple in a way okay because layla had a lot it was juicy we had a lot to go through now, the brothers they had a strict mother margaret Mm-hmm. And they were, it seems to be that they Strict were always but with kind, her. Yes, correct? C- correct. And it seemed that they were always with her mm-hmm. because there's a clip somewhere on the internet. I didn't put it in the video because I, okay, because I could just um, read it. It was fine, but it was basically that she was strict but kind and she was always with them. So I think when they separated, when Margaret and Carl separated, Carl was a stepfather. Um, I think it was like a weekend kind of situation where he took the kids on the weekend. She took them on another weekend. I what think happened to the father? Why they, would... They divorce. Yeah, but why would Carl see them? I guess he bonded with them. Like, I don't... The thing about this is that I don't understand... I don't know the circumstances of the parents. Like, I don't know how long Margaret was married to Tom, who were the biological mother and father of the brothers. I don't know if... Like, they divorced at, at, when the kids were, like, super, super young. Right. Like, babies. And so Carl raised them. I don't know. But if we're going on the speculation that Mar- Margaret and Carl were together to raise the boys up from their ages where they disappeared, mm-hmm. which was 6 and 11, 8 and 10, something like that. Mm-hmm. I can't remember specifically. Uh. Go back to the end. All the way to the end. There. Uh, six and 11. So six I was right. and 11. Okay. okay, so I don't know if he raised them up to 6 and 11 or what. But where was I going? I had a point. But I think what your point was that maybe he got close enough to them. And if he was right. there at the beginning, then he would have been their father that would have had visitation rights. As Correct. opposed to their yes. father. So I think it was like a weekend thing where he had them. Right. And he just dumped them off at the movie theater that they always go to and was like, away with you. And then he came back hours later and they were gone. So the thing about this, though, is that Mm. some of the people in the movie theater was like, yeah, they were there. And the other half were like, no, they never entered the movie theater. So either if this is a place that the kids always go, Mm -hmm. that means that they have to know the parents pretty well, too. Correct theoretically speaking i mean these kids this was back in the 70s parents didn't really pay that much attention to their kids a lot of times that's true like a lot of the kids who end up missing like like in the 1970s or 60s -hmm. they went missing because they went to do things by themselves i mean why do you think our parents became so paranoid because they saw stranger danger man yeah they saw their friends and family go Mm -hmm. missing constantly because parents stopped watching their kids Because that was around the time that, like, drugs started kicking in, like, hardcore, and the psychos became very real, (laughs) and they just sort of stopped. And the parents that were used to the 1920s, 1930s era of just, like, oh, nice people turned into, like, these sick people. These are also the older adults that, like, witnessed the atrocities of the World Wars, Mm -hmm. you know, 
it's they just dealing with their own mess and so now they are kidnapping kids left right and center like my dad tells me stories about when he was like six and seven walking down by himself to the corner store to pick up drinks and dinner and stuff like that and walking back by himself. i refuse to walk anywhere alone i refuse for any of my friends to do anything alone right i'm like no you going somewhere cool girl me too yeah where are you going you, every time you have to walk next door from where you work to go get food you're like text me so that i don't die yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you just you believe in safety and numbers i do even if it's on a phone exactly safety and numbers. exactly and you know it it's just i don't know to me i feel like with that particular story either one half of the that movie theater had to be on the dad's side Mm-hmm. Either the ones that were saying there was no, those kids weren't there. He or, paid them off in some way, if you think about it. Or the kids are the ones yeah. that said that he was there. Uh-huh. Because it's, if he, if he's with the people that say he was there, then, or that the kids were there, then he has a strict alibi. If it's the people that mm. are not with him, like, you didn't see these kids, you don't know where they are, you don't know nothing, then it's... He doesn't have an alibi, but the kids were never there. So, but to me, it would make more sense that he would, if he did something to those kids, he would pay off the people that would say, yes, they were here. Because then he has an alibi to say, I dropped them off. Here you go. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. And plus the fact, if you have half of the move there saying yes, half the move there saying no, it's so much uncertainty. Right. So it makes it harder for the police to figure out. And I don't think, they don't have cameras at the time no so you couldn't go back to like show the clip like you can't do that right so plus he's also he works at fort bragg correct which means he's military Mm -hmm. so are you saying he knows how to dispose of a body no i mean (laughs) well it was the 60s 60s was during vietnam i was gonna say Mm. respect for the military and Uh, like just protect our brothers in blue our mm. camo maybe um but that's also back in the 60s which is around the time of vietnam and korea and all that stuff and and they did not have any sympathy for the military even if you were in the south a lot of people hated the military back in those times because of what we were doing in those wars did they oh they were awful they people would come the military would come back and protesters would meet them at the um when they were getting off of the planes, Mm -hmm. spit at them, throw food at them, call them baby, had big signs saying, call them baby killers. Nobody wants you here. Um, And, you know, they were just soldiers doing what they were told to do. And, you know, not everybody was bad that went over there. And sometimes you just had to do what you had to do. And then they come back to their country right after, just a decade or like 10 or 20 years after the military was loved and celebrated for fighting in World War II. Now they come home and the military is absolutely hated for what they're doing at other countries and what they've done. And my dad, um, you know, was in the Navy most of his life. And in the night in the eighties, they still had to wear their dress uniforms anytime they went out in public. And they lived in California for a time. And they, people would, he would be driving down the road and he'd be in his dress whites and people would be throwing food at him while he was walking down the road just because he was military. I always thought, like, I know that some people have an opinion about the military and mm-hmm. everything a part of that, but I always thought that there was this respect for them no matter what. Because you grew up in the South. Yes, I did. <laughs> the South is all about, we so, thank you for serving. I guess it's a perspective thing. A lot of it is a perspective thing. I grew up in the military. I saw the sacrifices that were made. Mm-hmm. So I have a strong respect and, and love for the military. So with that notion, then is it possible that Carl didn't have that respect here? Possibly. And so half of them were like, yes. The other half were like, nah. Possibly. And I think, okay, so I read, there was this other, the thing about this case was that it's hard to find concrete evidence because it's so old. Right. So there are just like a bunch of threads about hearsay information. Right. And when Especially the, because you have so many different, um, not allegations, um. Reports? Reports, there you okay. go. Okay, reports. Yeah. 
one of the, it was like a thread, one of them was like how uh, a kid went to his house, went to the house to see if Terry or Alan could come out to play, but the father came out and said that they were grounded. So, it make with that, if we're taking that as like an actual thing that happened, mm-hmm. it makes me think that like, did they even, did, they, did he even take them to the movie theater? Or did they die in their house? And he just said, yeah, I went to the movie theater, mm. dropped them off, came back hours later. They never showed up. Right. And they've just been dead at their house for all this time. Possibly. Like, I don't know. And you know what? It could be maybe Carl did nothing. That's true. I mean, you said that in the mi- this was in the middle of a hurricane. It was. So, like, There was a maybe lot of water. Yeah. There was a lot of water. Maybe, you know, he had to work. Maybe something was happening, and see, I was, I'm confused. I thought you said that the mother dropped them off. No, Carl dropped them off. Carl dropped them. Okay, because you know maybe it's the weekend. Mm-hmm. The kids are bored. There's nothing to do. It's been raining. What can I do? I'm gonna go take the kids to the movie. Let them go and enjoy an afternoon at the movies takes him to the movies, and then says, I don't want to watch a kid's movie. You guys have fun. I trust you. Buddy system. Stay together. He leaves to go do whatever. It starts pouring down rain, and the kids are like, well, I mean, since when do kids always do what their parents tell them to do? When they say that they're going to go to the movies, maybe they're like, well, let's go to the And then they're with a different parent, with their mother. They're like, yes, ma'am. Right. But they're with their stepfather. Right. So it could be a, with my mom, I'm this way. With my dad, I'm this way. Absolutely. Because yeah. mom is going to keep us by her side 24-7. Mm-hmm. Dad is not. That's dad true. is just going to let us, oh, we want to go to the movies. Maybe if we just shout loud enough, they will let us go to the movies. <laughs> yeah. And so they go to the movies and maybe they just, I mean, it could have been one of those things where the kids got out of the car and Carl's like, okay, be safe. And, and he drives, yeah, drives off. off. Yeah. Kids don't even go inside. And then mm. the people are right. Maybe the workers that saw the kids at the movie theaters are the ones, because, you know, back in the day, for those of you that don't know, <laughs> um, cause you know, we just so fancy now school me back in the day at movie theaters, you had ticket takers that mm. you would have to go up and pay your money to before you could get into the movie theater, you would have to buy your ticket. So the people on the outside saw the kids and said, yeah, those two kids look familiar. I remember seeing them earlier, but the people on the inside never saw them because the kids never went in and bought their ticket. Oh my god, that's genius. I mean, I am, sign me up for the FBI. <laughs> I am digging your theories. So, so maybe the ones who did see them and the ones who didn't aren't lying. Yeah, maybe they're both right. They just, exactly. Oh. The, the ticket takers saw the kids. But they just said, never went into the building. Right, but you know, it's a busy day. It's pouring down rain on a Saturday wow. afternoon. They got a lot of people coming in. Plus the fact, if you just look at them, it, I'm pretty sure there's more than just one kid in North Carolina that looks like them. I don't know. The ginger's kind of hard to <laughs> hard to hide. The little kid, True. the six-year-old, yeah. Yeah, I you would notice a, a ginger, I think. You would see a redhead because there's not a lot of redheads in North Carolina. That's true. But still, I think that if it's a busy day, all the kids look alike to you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I think it's a... Nine times out of ten... The people, the ticket takers and stuff like that on the weekends are teenagers. They're not paying yeah. a lot of attention. So they see the kid getting dropped off. Maybe the kids come over and they go, hey, I like, this movie looks good. What do you think? No, I don't want that. Well, what about this one? No, I don't want to see that. You want to just go get some ice cream and, and see yeah. what and decide then? They walk down the street. A big flood comes. They get rushed into the lake. No one ever finds them. Or maybe they were just taken by some, some strange man. Could be. Or That's woman. possible. Yeah, you it's possible. Know. They maybe they were at, maybe stranger danger actually happened in this case. Maybe. Or let's have the thought process that this was all an elaborate plan. Mom was strict, couldn't stand being around mom that would not let them by their side, so- let them go away from her side. Didn't like dad. They were getting they were upset that the fighting was just too much. They had mm-hmm. already lived through this once with their first So they planned to run away. They planned to run away and oh. they are out there today. Maybe, oh, well, no. They weren't in Winston, right? The other girl was in Winston. Yeah, they were in Fayetteville. They were in Fayetteville. Who knows? I've never been to Fayetteville, but I feel like it's, I, I think it's, it's like a big city. It is Like big Charlotte. City. 
It's not as big as Charlotte. But it's a pretty big city. It, I'd say it's about as big as Greensboro. Okay. Something like that. Okay. So, and it's also a beach area. Mm. Fayetteville is right next to the beach. So there's a possibility, hey, let's go down to the beach. It's a hurricane. They don't realize it's a hurricane. Mm, they could be swept up in the ocean or something. You have no, yeah. Oh. Or maybe they just ran away. I like the ran away aspect because it, it, I hate that so far our theories are they're just dead. Yeah. Like, I hate that. Right. Well, for for Layla in, in Mary's case, because that was 1941, there's no way that they would still be alive. No, there's no way that they would still be alive. Well. The daughter was four. The daughter was four. But, that was but Layla right? would, yeah, but Layla would not be, I think she would be like 102, I think. I don't know math. I think she'd be 102 years old if she was still alive. But the daughter would be 81. So the daughter was, could still be alive. She theoretically could, could still be but alive. But her mother would not be. The mother would not, correct. So, and who knows? Yeah. They have, those two have a little bit more evidence against them that they're dead. Because right. the glass from the car was found. There was arsenic, or like the poison found. Right. There's just a lot, a lot of things. A lot of loose ends to the doesn't The husband's sense. kind of strange. You yeah, know? it's all a bit shady. The brother's... There was no evidence found for foul play. There was no evidence. There's no evidence, period. period. It could have just been that they decided to run away. That's very true. And lastly, okay, we're going to talk Sherry Truesdale yes. and Winston-Salem. So hers also doesn't have any evidence. She left. She was super pumped about going to Mount Tabor, which, so Mount Tabor is still a high school. It's still around. Okay. I did not know that they had, like, um, programs during the summer. I didn't know that. Some high schools do. It depends on how swanky they are and mm. stuff like that. Like, um, in Greensboro, there's a high school called Weaver High School. And it is a magnet school that is devoted 100% to the arts. Hmm. So you can go in and get, like, have an accelerated learning in um, theater, music, computers, um, graphic design, mm-hmm. all this fancy stuff, and it's a very like if you're if you're talking public versus this type of it's a public school, but it's like a magnet school, so mm-hmm. it's very much like a hippie school compared to like pr- public school is, mm-hmm. where they kind of like they have like free thinking sessions, and you can go out and sit on the lawn and eat your lunch. You can wow. leave when you have like. When you get to, like, 11th grade, you can leave campus and go get lunch and come back and stuff like that. Why did I never invest in a magnet school? I don't know. Especially this one. I wanted to go to this one, but you had to audition, and I felt um, so bad about myself. I didn't think I could do that. Um, but my my dear friend that lives around the corner from me, as mm-hmm. you all know, we'll call her C. Um, <laughs> okay. She went to that high school after she graduated from um, middle school. She left me and went to that high school, and she followed in the theater program. Wow. It was really, really cool. Wow. Yeah. So, any Hooglebees. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so she was super excited about that. Mm-hmm. And then she went to, I think, when she went to the mall. Okay, click it. She went to oh, the yes. mall. And I think she was going to get donuts. And then she was going to. They, like, her poor. She was given so many things. Right? Like, she, she had to get. She went to go get supplies. She went to go get donuts. And then she went to Rayla's department store to get money to pay on her mother's charge card. Rayla's is an actual store. Is it still around? It is this not. Day? It is not still around. Okay. I had to ask a um, family member. Okay. I was like, because when I read it, I was like, do they even pay less? Is this just a, <laughs> a misprint? And it's like, no, this Rayla's is an actual department store my uh relative was like it's a um nickel and dime store that's what they used to call okay. that <laughs> that's what she called it okay i don't think it's a nickel and dime store because i feel like if you have a charge card i feel like it's a kind of not an upscale but like a well it's in the um militian pictorial history museum okay tell me so... about that what what <laughs> This was, what, in the 70s? Uh, yeah, she disappeared in 1970. It might be because of her, because the second, I, t- I just typed in Rayless, um store, whatever, mm-hmm. in um, North Carolina, and the second thing that popped, the first one popped up, stores and shops, m- milica- whatever, 
Pictorial History Museum, and the second one came up. Sherry Truesdale, 14, Winston-Salem, 19. Oh, that's so tragic. 70. So that's what that's that That's terrible store advertisement, is. don't you right? think? That might be why they went out of business. <laughs> that is terrible advertisement. Yeah. Oh, wow. So everything that I'm seeing, though, show that, like, they have... It was a clothing store. Okay. Ones that come to mind... I guess when my... Uh... My relative said nickel and dime. I guess she meant like it was cheap, cheap clothes. It might have. Been. I think that's maybe what she meant. Because I'm, because I'm thinking if you have a charge card, there's no way that it's like a ninety nine cent store. No. Like it's a, like it's a store store. On this forum, someone said retail and clothing stores, nineteen fifty to nineteen sixty in Gastonia, trying to find out what clothing stores or department stores were in business around nineteen sixty and earlier. Mm-hmm. And then someone responded with the ones that come to mind are Matthew Belk, which is the Belk stores now. Um, Rayless, Efforts, Cohen's, Cato. Cato wow. was around that long? Woo. Okay. Parks Men's Store and Rose's Department Store. Rose's is still around. It is. There were a few others on Main Street that I can't recall. There were... A lot of those I've never heard of, though. Yeah. Wow. There were Five and Dimes, Woolworths, and Eagles. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it's in comparison with those type of stores, Belk... It's a it's a clothing store. It's, it's a clothing, clothing store, store. Yeah, Cato. Yeah, stuff like that. Wow. Okay. So she had a mission. She did. And I'm she was... I want, I'm guessing that all of them were in the same vicinity because it seems she left her home to catch a bus to go downtown. So I'm going to assume that all of the Rayless, the mall, and the donut shop were all downtown. Well, considering, let's see. I'm trying to figure. That's out... That's the back of it. We're looking at a picture of the Rayless department store. That's the back of it. I wonder if that building's still around. Like, That's not in Winston, though. That's, that's not in not... Winston-Salem. It's... They're not in Win... That's not in Winston-Salem. I don't remember which city nor state, but it's not in Winston-Salem. Okay. Because I could not find one in Winston-Salem. Because, I mean, we live in North Carolina. Maybe we could find out where it was and travel and go right? see. Right? That's cool. Field that's trip. It, right? Take Field pictures. Trip. Just look at the building. I'm trying to see what exactly she went to go look for. Where do you She have, went to uh, get okay, shopping. No. Oh. Mm. Wow, that was a quick transition. Uh. She was going to the fine arts program. There we go. She went to go buy school supplies, donuts, and then make a payment. Okay. And she left at 1130. Yeah. So to likely, catch a bus downtown. So I'm guessing everything was downtown. Okay. So everything was in walking distance. Like Probably. once she get off the bus, everything's in walking right. distance. So like places like Winston Salem, because mm-hmm. I've been to Winston Salem before. Like right now, the way that it is, it's kind of split up into two places. There's like the downtown area that's like the upscale downtown, and right. then there's like the downscale downtown, which isn't like that downscale so i don't know how much it has changed but there are bus stops that take you all throughout the area Uh uh-huh and when you think about like like haynes mall is one of the biggest malls in north carolina haynes mall concord mill and i think they're north north point which is in the charlotte area okay um, that would make sense. The North Point is pretty, pretty it's big because it's in Charlotte. Huge. So that makes sense. Um, and if we're assuming that it's going to be in that area, because normally that type of, like something like that where she's going to go make a payment, she's going to get donuts, and she's got to go buy school supplies. Mm-hmm. Likely it's going to be in the area where like malls and stuff like that are. Right. So that's probably where she went. And then the thing is, we don't know if she even bought school supplies or went or got the donuts. All we know is she went to Rayless. Right, because the clerk saw her leave. He was the only person to, he was the last person to see her alive that we know of. Not alive, but the last person to see her that we know of. So we know that she definitely went there. Mm -hmm. Where she went afterwards, we don't know. Right. She could have gotten back on the bus. She could have. She could have. Gotten lost. I doubt it. Unlikely. She was, what, 11? 14. She was 14. Mm-hmm. She grew up in this area. Yeah. She probably, so she probably didn't get lost. Yeah. She but... probably knew exactly where she was supposed to go. My thought process for this one is I think she was probably kidnapped. Out of all of by them. By a stranger. Definitely. By a stranger. Because yeah. there's nothing. There's like, it's like she just vanished into thin air. Right. 
It, so, yeah. You know, we don't know what the conditions were when she went. Like, it could have been that she, not necessarily that she could have gotten lost, but, you know, the 70s, that was I mean, to she, be fair, I've lived in North Carolina forever. I can still get lost. <laughs> so, to be fair. Yeah, that's true. That, that is true. Yeah. But, I mean, something like the donut shop, the department store, and food. Like... Or in school supplies. Yeah. You would think that she knows where those businesses are. Now, the bus system, maybe not so much. Maybe she's Well, she had a bus stop at the front of her house. It doesn't mean that she got on the bus all the time. Maybe her mom always took her to school. Maybe. Maybe she Hmm. walked to school. Hmm. Because I I highly doubt someone who was super pumped about a summer program would run away. No, so she definitely did not run away. She situation. definitely did not run away. So the closest thing is that she was definitely kidnapped by someone. Yeah. Now, the person who kidnapped her, did they kill her or is she still alive and she's just she's been warped, her mind had been warped so much that she doesn't actually know who she is. Cuz I feel like that could happen. I feel like that could happen. I that mean, you can could, be yeah. that you can have Stockholm syndrome so badly that you just erase who you were. Possibly. I mean, brainwashing is a real thing. Yeah. Like, you know, that's that's something that's possible. I mean, if we're talking realistically, yes. It's of course, unlikely. it's always unreal. It's always realistically on this channel. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking realistically, mm. it's it's unlikely. The most of the time in these type of situations, kidnapping horrible things happen and then they yeah. end up dying because you it's that 48 hour window yeah that you have to find them and the 48 hours are crucial because i don't want to say i don't really know the statistics about it i don't know the numbers offhand or in front of me right but i feel like when you are kidnapped by a stranger mm-hmm. there's a rare possibility that they will keep you alive yeah i mean we still see the stories like right. uh castro is that his name Possibly. What is, um, is Ariel Castro the one who kidnapped, uh, those three girls and they were found years later? I think that was his name. I might be confusing him with the guy from Cuba. I, Fidel Castro? Okay, so it is a, a straw. A straw. Um, yeah. This is why I don't do live. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like him, he had three of, he had three girls and he kept them alive. Correct. But, like you still you still hear about those, but I feel like those cases are more rare than people who just kidnap them and just kill them within the forty eight hours. So I feel like if she was kidnapped, I don't think she is alive. Yeah, I think I don't know where she is. Right. Because I think Winston Salem is pretty big. It's not the biggest city mm-hmm. we got. Not by any means. But I think it's a pretty. It's still a pretty big city. You know what? Oddly enough, it's larger from what I've heard. It's larger than Greensboro. Okay. Which is surprising because you hear more about Greensboro, I feel like. Yeah. Than Winston. And Winston-Salem, I believe, is supposed to be larger than Greensboro. Interesting. Yeah. I feel, um, well, I want to say Winston-Salem is like in the top. For, for at yeah. least the most populated. It's in the top somewhere. Oh, yeah. It's got to be. So I think it's. With that, I feel like it's pr- it's a pretty big city. Mm-hmm. So I think if she was kidnapped in Winston Salem, and just Google this right now, that, there you go. If she was kidnapped in Winston Salem and they did kill her within the forty eight hours, she literally could be anywhere. She could be. She could literally be anywhere in Winston Salem, and that I is feel disturbing. like though with her, with how excited she was about everything and stuff like that, I feel like it's unlikely that she wouldn't have found her way back home if she was able to get away from her kidnappers. Yeah, you know. But because it's been 49 years, and I, I don't think she, if she did get kidnapped, I don't think she managed to get away. Okay, so the top five biggest cities. In North Carolina are. According to population. Okay. As of right now, not. Back then. That back then. Okay. Charlotte, which has 842,051 8, people. Good Lord. Raleigh. Which has 458,880 people. Okay. Greensboro, which has 287,027 people. Okay. Uh, Durham, 263,016. Winston-Salem, 242,203. So we're top, that's top five. Winston-Salem is five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one
four or five. Yep. And then the next one, just for fun facts, is Fayetteville at 204,759 people. Interesting. So if we're saying, okay, let's do it like this. If we're saying that population standards, Mm -hmm. that Fayetteville, Winston-Salem, Winston-Salem, Fayetteville, five and six, most popular, most popular, most populated cities. Mm -hmm. Who's to say that back then they weren't as populated too? True. I'm going to look that up right now. We have censuses for a reason, people. <laughs> 1970, right? Uh, yeah. Um, it's sad to think, though, like, of Layla, um, uh, Alan and Terry, Mary, Rachel, and Sherry, that it's possible that they are dead. Yeah. Because I feel like... Like, of course I want to think in my mind, oh, you know, if they were kidnapped, you know, they just were brainwashed. It's fine. They just remember themselves. But in reality, I feel like if they were kidnapped and they did find a way to, if the, okay, if they were kidnapped and they were alive, mm-hmm. I feel like they would have seen themselves somewhere. Right. They might, we didn't, they didn't have internet back then, but I feel like they would have seen themselves in a newspaper. Right. Or something. But, and be like, hey, that's me. I'm missing. Oh, snap. But that's not what happened. Yeah. Just a side note. Yes. um, Winston and Durham switched. In 1970? Yeah. So, Winston was the fourth most populated. Durham was the fifth. So, everything else was the same. Charlotte, Raleigh, Greensboro, Winston, Salem, Durham. That's interesting. Yeah. But, you know, going back to what you were just saying. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that's the saddest thing about missing cases. Missing case reports. It's the fact that with a missing case report, you never, it's a double-sided coin because you never have the opportunity to give up hope. Mm -hmm. There's always that chance that they could come walking through your door and you could see your loved one again. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you never get closure. All these family members ended up dying before before they they ever found out what happened to their loved one yeah it's the not knowing it's the not knowing that hurts the most yeah that's a song well okay i just wanted to bring it around all right just to show that music really is in touch with our souls sorry no it's fine i dig it (laughs) i totally dig it but i mean that is that's the it's the not knowing it's the it's the fact that they just well you know what you never know wherever they are if they are alive because optimism is key it is i like despite the fact that i've said numerous times that they are probably dead i want to remain optimistic Mm -hmm. and unbiased and neutral about everything absolutely so if they are still around you know i hope that Taryn and allen can find their way back to fayetteville Mm -hmm. uh mary rachel could find her way back to carolina beach because her home is still there yep i'm not too sure if it's empty Mm -hmm. but that home is still there mm-hmm. and hopefully sherry can make her way back to winston-salem because all these cities are still around and kicking they are they are and that would be nice that would be mm. well you know that was Brittany. that was awesome thank you for coming on my little channel absolutely anytime this was one of the least undisturbing ones <laughs> so i will talk and you about... picked to talk about this i one. did because i found this one really interesting yes. out, of, out of all of them that you had because you know i'm not good with death and sad yes, stories and stuff that's like that's very true so i think i picked this one because of the fact that there's still hope that there's is... still hope that there are people out there that they grew up had kids and their lineage carries on oh that would make me happy right that would make me happy but you know as always i'm mr true crime remember to st- mm, wow that's why i don't do it live what's my motto um wow this is gonna be a moment keep mm. be safe be- i know i got it <laughs> <laughs> as always i miss a true crime and remember to be kind be loud be aware stay true folks